Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. And we are heading down to the beautiful town of Anglesey. We are indeed, and a man who can now be called a friend of the show. I think this must be his fifth or sixth uh, visit to either Two Blokes Chatting or Sports Fix. Coach of the Anglesey Footy Club and only... Eight hours away from action tonight at the MCG. Paul Nigro, good morning. Good morning, Robert. How are we? Good. You must be getting just a little bit excited, are you? Uh, very excited, Robert. As you said, still eight hours to go. So, uh... What can happen in eight hours, Paul? <laughs> what can happen? <laughs> no, we're all uh, just genuinely excited that local footy's back and uh, got good coverage and airplay yesterday, a couple of games, so certainly looking forward to ours tonight. Did you go and have a look at um, Torquay's Good Friday game yesterday? Now, Robert, just have a bit of a look for a while, yes. Did, um, what did you think of the uh, the standard? Is a is the Ballerine footy continuing on the rise based on what you saw? Oh, there's certainly no, no detraction from where it was well, over 12 months ago now, so... And I think besides, you know, having not played for 18, 19 months, are only going to get better as the season progresses. So, but yeah, there's certainly a lot of high energy, and uh, certainly Torquay had uh, plenty out there on offer. So, um, yeah, no, good to have local footy back, as I said. Yep. Paul, Paul, it's Neil here. Welcome to the show again. It's good to have you on board. Um, Hi, Neil. Good, thanks, mate. On the radio this morning on another station as I was driving in here, the one in my car talked about local footy being back from Sorrento to Lawn, from Inverloch to Wonthaggy. So I, <laughs> I reckon there's a little bit more than that going on around town. So uh, Yeah, it's a bit, wide, a bit more widespread than that. I was talking to someone in Mildura this morning and told them that, and they went, really? It's actually happening up here as well. But... Um, <laughs> In your part of the world, uh, 18 months, as you said, 19 months since uh, anyone kicked a footy in anger. And as a coach, how do you how do you maintain that enthusiasm? Not so much now, because I suspect the boys would be a bit toey today. Yep. But when you get into you know the early part of this pre-season, how, how have you managed to keep them up and about and keen to play footy? Yeah, look, uh, you, know, the, you know what they called circuit breakers and a few distractions along the way. But um, you know, by and large, our groups remain positive through the whole lot. Training's been as consistent and normal as we could possibly make it. Um, and, yeah, it's just been a real growing... You know, it's just been building and building for us, and, you know, we've had terrific numbers on the track, and uh, everyone's, you know, keen as mustard. So, and I'm sure that's a consistent theme through most clubs from what I'm hearing, certainly within our region. So, um, yeah, we're, you know... We're ready to play footy. You can training's the the hard part for the guys as well. So you know they want to get out and play. And compared with the start of what would have been the 2020 season, how many new faces you've got at Anglesey for 2021? Is it pretty much the same squad as you would have gone into last year with, or is there a few new faces? No, no. We've um, we've got six, you know, six guys making their debut for the club today. Um, and our list would have grown on top of the recruits we had for 2020. I would suggest there'd be another 10 or 12 uh, minimum on top of that. Um, you know, certainly running around in the early game and a couple in the in the main game as well. And our our numbers is as healthy as they have been for three or four years. What about key losses, uh, Paul? Is there anyone that um, wasn't able to back up for a a second pre-season after preparing for 2020? Uh, Zane Vale has retired, as has Ryan Dalhouse. Um, they were, you know, coming towards the end of their career in 2020. So unfortunately, the year off uh, hasn't helped their case. Um, so they'll be taking a back seat. Um, uh, and barring that, um, yeah, we're, we're we're largely intact. Uh, the Anglesey. Torquay rivalry is well known for many years and it's based on pure unadulterated hatred uh, there is a Mottawari Anglesey uh, <laughs> rivalry that's developing and I think it's out of uh, mutual respect and admiration rather than uh, hatred but are, are you you've only been at Anglesey a short time but you two of uh, clubs have, have played some corkers uh, home and away and, and finals are you, are you sort of enjoying a bit of rivalry developing here? 
Oh, absolutely. I, I think hatred's a harsh word, Robert. No, oh, I, th- I think if the, I know some really old Anglesey blokes, and I don't think there's any doubt that's what it is, and it's fantastic, I reckon. Um, <laughs> it's Collingwood Carlton stuff. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, not a worry, yeah, there's, you know, over the, well, I'm taking out last year, but the couple of years prior, there's, there wasn't a lot between the two of us on any given um, stage. So in 2019, they got hold of us early. We squared it up and... And then we got over the top one by, you know, three kicks in the final. So, yeah, there's not much between us at all. Um, you know, a lot's happened in 12 months, obviously, with no one playing on. And there's a few new faces in their mix as well. But absolutely, a rival will be there and they're showcasing their, their ground. And it's a, it's a big occasion for them tonight as well. And a couple of key characters, uh, David Robertson and the, the late Max Harvey, which is certainly now taken on by the the Harvey family at Modawari, uh, have had a little cup that they play for which is now added to the uh, Bendigo Community Bank Cup that uh, that the two teams play for which adds a little bit more to it but it, it's certainly it's certainly a game that I know Mottawari really look forward to and it's pleasing that uh, you blokes have the same thoughts about it. Yeah no we love playing them and we know it's going to be competitive and uh, I'm tipping it'll go the full hundred and whatever minutes until the a decision will be made so yeah we're looking forward to it. As a Brisbane Lions supporter I can tell you don't ease up until the very last second of the game <laughs> and make sure the umpires understand the holding the ball rule too that's the other one I might just drop in there so the, the other I'm thing I'm glad to talk to the umpires am I <laughs> no you aren't <laughs> no definitely not no, no absolutely not no, no. Um, but I, my record I'm, I'm obviously the, the novice when it comes to Ballerine footy in fact the other day I said that and it was actually a GDFL club that we were talking to <laughs> so um, but my recollection of the 2019 season was it absolutely came down to the absolute wire in terms of who made the the five and there was one team who missed out very very stiff I'm assuming that that's going to be a similar kind of season this year a really even season amongst teams anybody can beat anybody on the day that sounds like a cliche doesn't it (laughs) it is but uh, I would suggest strongly that would be very similar and I would think uh, Newcomb and Queenscliff will certainly be pushing their case forward as well. So, well, Newcomb certainly started well, kicking 28 goals yeah. uh, yesterday. That's a, that's a pretty good start for a side that was chipping away down the, the bottom end. Yeah, massive start. Um, obviously, a few guys got amongst it there. I see. So, yeah, and, and those two sides, you know, will will have improved no doubt. So the evenness was there in 2019. There were six points, I think, between first and sixth mm. after 18 games, and. Um, Yes, highly competitive and using a cliche again, there's going to be a lot of eight-point games that suggest that the season <laughs> unfolds. So. Yes, you'd better come to play every week if you want to use that one with the boys going into it. Look, you know, today you really need to come. Bring your A game. You can use that one too if you'd like, if it's yeah, going to help. So. Should I write these down? No, <laughs> I, think, I think they're well enough known to actually just pull out of the memory, to be perfectly honest uh, with you. Paul, uh, some of the the modern preparation for coaching is uh, spying on the opposition, being uh, prepared for what might come. Uh, it's been a long, long time since Modawari last played in a, anything other than a practice match. Have, have you uh, had spies out or uh, information gatherers, whatever you like to call them, or are you going in totally Forward cold? Forward scouts. Forward scouts, there's another one. Yeah, 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 um, no, no, we, um, our focus will be on uh, what we put out today. Um, getting our method and structures and everything right on what we want to do. Um, we've certainly started looking at the games now that they're playing. Um, in terms of training, um, no, we don't We don't send spies to training. Um, so you know, we concentrate on what uh, we can control and you know what happens on the day or night in this case. Um, We'll address it as what pops up in front of us. Does it change the the way you approach the game? I'm not talking about game plan. I'm talking more about you know the preparation and stuff on the day when the game is a late start, and it's obviously going to be a hot day as well, where you know players are going to need to hydrate more than they otherwise would. Yes, hopefully on water. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, oh, 100 percent. And we've, we've spoke, we spoke about that Thursday night as a group, and um, you know we've put in place what we need to put in place for that. Yeah, because the one that always puzzles me about a six o'clock start is, you know, if you if you've got a two o'clock start, you can have something to eat about eleven thirty, and you know you're okay to go into the game. But when it's six o'clock, that's dinner time. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> stop it! Stop at three quarter time and have a pie. 
<laughs> Maybe the coaches could, but I think the players will be. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's an awkward, yeah, you're right. It's an awkward time, and it, it's an awkward time for spectators and supporters as well. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out this time. Um, you know, something we can look at going forward. But it is what it is for tonight, and um, both sides are in the same same boat. So we're there to play footy and do a job, and um, yeah, well, obviously the post match analysis of timing and crowds etc will we'll take care of that uh, most there might of the, be the odd modder, modder burger sold to the, <laughs> to the speckies I reckon the duty burgers will be on special tonight don't you worry about that oh, I think uh, they go alright they do go alright uh, uh, Paul uh, we do know that, that the focus will always be on the men's senior football team around Ballerine but there's a hell of a lot more to a footy club than just one team uh, how, how has the club handled the uh, the really difficult time from from late 2019 to finally kicking off today. In term, well, yeah, absolutely. There's been a lot going on off field, obviously, to get all these teams and um, fixtures and everything else in, in in place. And you know, just I think everyone's just looking forward to the ball being bounced and the netball being thrown, and um, you know, so we can do what we're good at: go out and play the games. Um, a lot of hard work to get there and um, you know the results will be out there and you know, just everyone's as keen as mustard and I'm sure that, as I said at the start that's that'll be consistent with all clubs players and also with our women's football kicking off next week as well that's uh, you know that got put on hold for 12 months as well so they'll be ready to go next week uh, against Parliament Heads. And uh, change of leadership at the top of the club obviously uh, makes it a little bit different Peter Mungrel Gowan stepping down as president, Jamie McKenzie coming in, so so a new look around you. How's that been uh, rolling along? Yeah, no, very well. Jamie's um, obviously come in with some new ideas, and um, Peter Mungrel Gowan has <laughs> two, two stints of six years, 12 years, and, you know, terrific, terrific fella, and uh, still around the club and helping out in whatever shape way of shape or form he can so he, he, he's enormous and you know Jamie's um, got his new crew and um, you know there's always subtle changes but at you know at the end of the day we're, we're still here to play footy and netball and, and the like so you know very smooth transition in terms of off field. Uh, that's good stuff well I look forward to seeing you uh, tonight we'll uh, we will be there no doubt and you will yes and where, where are you uh who are you supporting tonight, Rob? I know you're a little bit divided between no, the two camps as well. I no, no, I'm, I will be supporting game. just the game itself. The yeah. game of football, the Paul, football I'll is be the supporting winner tonight. tonight. It yeah. will be the winner. I'm, I hopefully will get to present the Community Bank Cup at the end of the evening, and yeah. I don't really care who I present it to as long as it's... Who do you think uh, you'll be presenting it to, Rob? Does it just stop sitting on the fence? <laughs> do you think you'd be presenting No, I, th- I think it'll be a draw. I... I <laughs> <laughs> what, are we allowed to have draws? It, is it, it, Paul, I'm trying to, to conduct a credible radio program here, and that's what I have to deal with as a co-host. It's extraordinary, isn't it? What about Neil? Have you got a preference tonight in tonight? I don't have a preference, you understand. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, tipping, uh, I'm tipping Anglesey to win. Oh, yeah? What's that based on? Uh, the fact that we're talking to the Anglesey <laughs> coach, and I'm good mates with his daughter. But uh, apart from that... Um, no, it, it, my heart says maroon and blue because being a Lions man, of course, so that's got to be with uh, with Motta, But uh, see, see, you've squared that up as well. Yeah, yeah, pretty happy with that. Yeah, but see, I've actually named both sides. Rob doesn't even know who's playing. <laughs> and we do need to ask you, of course, here's a bit of a chance to give, uh, we're not allowed to plug businesses, but if I was in Anglesey and I was to go to the local news agent, for example, what would I find on the front page of the Addy today? <laughs> uh, you'd certainly find a very good spread about local footy and uh, crowds back at local footy. Excellent. So, it's uh, page, and uh, you'd certainly find an article or two in the back half of local footy. He's getting a good spread. And uh, you got, got any specials? To see. Got any specials, Paul? Any books you want to throw out that perhaps might be discounted, or perhaps <laughs> greeting up, cards up. or something? <laughs> Not at all, Rob. Just come and pick up an Addy for three bucks. Would be great. Three bucks fifty, and and Paul will sign it for you. You can't say fairer than that. He'll sign the bit that says Anglesey on the back page. Oh uh, dear. Uh, good luck tonight, mate. We'll be seeing you hopefully before the game for a bit of a good luck, if not certainly afterwards. And uh, uh, thanks again for your time. We greatly appreciate the uh, the access we have to 
to your good self, and we look forward to uh, speaking to you again through the year, hopefully. Yeah, good to have you back on the airwaves. Good on you, mate. All Thanks, the best. Paul. See you, mate. Tonight. All the best. Paul Nigro, the senior coach of the Anglesey Footy Club, and a good fella. And, of course, we do know Paris, his daughter, who was part of our uh, football calling team for a year. Go Footy. Live. Yes, she did a very good job. She's gone off to do other things, but uh, a fine young lady and very much a pioneer of the Torquay women's football team. If, if it was not for Paris, they wouldn't have a footy team.